पीस का टेक ऑफ योर मास्क योर नेम प्लीज सर दिव्यांश सिंह सो मिस्टर दिव्यांश यू आर इन द आई आर एस एंड यू आर पोस्टेड हियर इन द नॉर्थ ब्लॉक इन डेली नो सर एक्चुअली आई एम अंडर गोइंग ट्रेनिंग राइट नाउ फरीदाबाद ओके बट योर फॉर्म से इज यूर फोर्टी सेवन बी नॉर्थ ब्लॉक ये सर एक्चुअली दिस वॉज जस्ट as a placeholder because we said that we need to fill the address of ministry no, of finance okay. now twice you have gone to upsc as i have seen from the dad how many marks you got each time so in my first attempt i got 180 and in the second attempt i got 162 and you got irs when you got 162 no so 180 180 okay so that's so you have taken leave and you come today so today is saturday so it's oh acha yeah. actually for us retired people all days are saturdays and all days are working days <laughs> it makes no difference to us that's why sorry for this okay so let's start can you tell us something about yourself so i'll start with my introduction so my name is divyansh singh and i am from jaipur rajasthan Um, uh, Jaipur is the city from where I did most of my schooling. I graduated in 2016 from IIT Delhi. There I majored in computer science and engineering. After that, I worked at Microsoft for one and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I decided to resign from my job and started preparing for civil services. Mm -hmm. And in the 2019 attempt, I got into Indian Revenue Services, Customs and Indirect Taxes, and and took an UL for one year. And I'll be appearing uh, in this interview for this year. So now you are to go in training. Yes, sir. Now, why do you say this Indian Revenue Services? Is it is the full form services? Indian Revenue Services? Yes, sir. Indian Revenue Services. No, it's Indian Revenue Service. Because people generally, I don't know. Everybody these days says Indian Administrative Services, Indian Police Services. <coughs> tell me a few things mm -hmm. about the first let me understand your love for snakes how is this uh, hobby uh so it's 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 a sort of a childhood passion of sorts so uh, when i was little and uh, and i was born in churu <laughs> rajasthan so there we have a lot of tribal people and they used to carry snakes and uh, uh, do this dance which you might have also heard of the Kal kalbelia dance and so there i sort of was introduced with the snakes and then my fascination grew after that i started watching snake programs on discoveries national geographic started following some shows here and there and uh, so since then it's been like a hobby so it is still there yes but do you physically also uh, touch snakes catch snakes play with them or is it just only on the screen now uh, sir it's a bit of both so whenever i get the opportunity and whenever the snake is non venomous i i have also touched and handled those snakes but i don't uh, usually interact with the poisonous or venomous snakes because i'm no, not but where do you get these whenever you get the opportunity where do you get the opportunity of getting uh, non venomous sir, uh, sir actually sometimes when i go to the rural so area or my village is in mirzapur mm -hmm. so there i've seen some of the snakes and uh, a uh, one time i was there at uh, one there was a, a snake that was caught in the fisherman's net and then okay. i actually so please tell us a few things about the culture of rajasthan uh, sir but sir culture is very diverse so especially because of the aravallis i would say we have two cultures one that exists in the west of the rajasthan and the second that is there in the east of rajasthan and uh, in, in western uh, rajasthan we we have the language marwadi and in eastern rajasthan we there is a predominance of hindi and mm -hmm. uh, th there are forts uh, all across rajasthan which have been there in the unesco world heritage sites as well okay. so there are different dances such as the kalvelia dance that talked about ghumar dance and so we have different festivals world famous festivals are also there like pushkar camel festival teej festival gangor festivals Uh, and plus sir rajasthan has always been associated with rajputs and the hall 
whole royal culture so there is a lot of tourism that uh, happens mm. uh, on oh, that front also okay now uh, tell me according to you what police reforms should be there in the country so the stage is already set for police reforms because of various uh, commissions and supreme court judgments like there are prakash singh guidelines there was also malinath commission report was also there so sir i think we should take those uh, reforms forward so which are the ones i am asking you uh, so specifically i would say we need to actually uh, separate the investigation from the policing wings so this was a one major recommendation second recommendation was to establish the uh, police complaints authority the national police commission and uh, national police commission sir i am not very sure of the exact term national police uh, i'm not sure of okay, okay. and uh, and so there was also a, a specific impetus on the transfer of officers so it, it was said that the, there should be a stable tenure for officers and uh, and yes sir, i think these so what is being be done about, about these uh so not much uh, because it's a state issue and uh, states are not so very willing to why states are not doing it sir ultimately it will uh, take uh, take their powers on the police authorities so it it will make the institutions more neutral and thus will be less uh, prone to political uh, influence so what are you saying i mean say clearly so what are you saying states why are they not doing it uh, sir uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, so there are political aspects that are associated with it so a lot of politicians political parties use police uh, or, or exert their influence on police and once these uh, reforms are implemented their influence will decrease so this i think this is the major issue as to why so these reforms not are not yes sir so they will not do it yes now yes. in even in the current scenario at the national level you are saying police is under flag every other day in different states for different reasons and uh, there is a need that uh, there should be there but you see no hope that they will ever do it uh sir i do see hope but uh, it's very difficult uh, because uh, a national consensus needs to be reached and uh, okay let's move on to something else now this ukraine war is a different kind of a war many new trends unseen earlier or unheard of have emerged that is what people are saying can you tell me what are those different trends uh so the first uh, trend uh, i would uh, i would say was the uh, is the use of economic sanctions that have been put on russia okay. by the western countries okay the second uh, trend i would say the use of drones and uh, other new type of warfare that is being employed by ukraine and as well as russia mm. and and so thirdly i would say the, um, the 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 support that the west has provided to the mm. uh, ukraine in terms of ammunition and uh, in terms of But, uh, so capital during war nations providing support to each other thus that has always been there nothing new second world war there were so many countries on one side on the other side there were so many countries but tell me uh, women uh, literacy what is the percentage of women literacy in india so 66% mm-hmm. and lowest is which state sorry sir i'm not mm-hmm. aware of it okay now my last question is you kindly tell me the ports from east to west so ports 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 sea ports and from east to west uh, sir we have this uh, kolkata diamond harbor to hugli port and uh, then the the paradwip port and the visakhapatnam port and the chennai port and uh, then the kochi port and then Ma- marmagao port and the jnb marmagao okay after kochi will marmagao okay and sir jnpt and uh, oh i see and uh, one 
फ्रंटलाइन गुजरात थैंक यू मिस्टर दिव्यांश यू लिव्ड इन मिर्जापुर एज वेल एज इन जयपुर सर एक्चुअली माय फैमिली बिलोंग्स फ्रॉम मिर्जापुर सो आर परमानेंट रेसिडेंस इज मिर्जापुर हैव यू लिव्ड इन जयपुर आल्सो नो सर आई हैव नॉट लिव्ड इन यू नॉट लिव्ड इन जयपुर नो सर आई हैव लिव्ड इन जयपुर बट नॉट इन मिर्जापुर बट नॉट इन मिर्जापुर और नॉट इन मिर्जापुर यस ओके ओके बट योर फैमिली बिलोंग्स टू मिर्जापुर यस ओके देन आई विल रीफ्रेम व्हाट आई वांटेड टू आस्क यू टेल मी व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस इन कल्चर बिटवीन यूपी एंड राजस्थान I want to ask you Jaipur and Mirzapur now I brought back this question What is the difference Something striking in you know, two three aspects <clears throat> Sir I I would say um Rajasthan is very famous for its uh, forts uh, and palaces I want to ask you something something different. Uh, okay, tell me about the people. What is what is the difference uh, between the two people? So people uh so frankly I don't see that too much of a difference between the uh, two or oh, so, two, two uh, people from these two states because uh, we sort of speak the same language. There are some language variations for example the uh, people living in the east UP speak uh, Uh, Bhojpuri and the people living in, as I said, in the western Rajasthan speak Marwadi, but more or less uh, people do understand Hindi. And secondly, sir, we can see uh, the, the culture. The difference in the culture comes uh, from from uh, somewhat from the geography itself. So, uh, from the agricultural practices in Rajasthan, we actually grow uh, water uh, crops that take less water, such as mustard, uh, pulses in in UP. Uh, usually rice sugarcane and wheat is grown yeah okay what is this uh, described to us the phenomena of shifting sand sand dunes how does it occur uh, so the primary uh, force be, uh, behind the shif- shifting sand dunes are the are the winds which actually take uh, uh, take place or uh, shift one sand dune but first shift the sand dunes from one place to other sir but i don't know the intricacies of how the process uh, is done okay okay now tell me uh, reforms in the tax structure gst of course was a major reform but prior to gst beginning from 1991 can you tell me some of the major reforms tax reforms uh, sir i think the uh, one of the major reforms was bringing in the value added tax uh, so before gst the state brought their own vat uh, which actually replaced the sales tax and the center brought its own uh, vat uh, that is the sand vat to replace the central excise duties and uh, which uh, ultimately paved the way to bring in gst so i i would say that uh, after 1991 so these were the sort of the big reforms and secondly sir the services were also brought in in, in the tax structure uh, so that can be also says a new service tax was levied now there were reforms uh, after 19 since 1991 on personal income tax corporate income tax corporate tax uh sorry sir i'm not aware of it i'm not aware of it right. okay now corruption how big a problem is it So it's uh, it's one of the biggest problems that is. But the people don't appear to think so. Corruption and uh, because uh, they keep electing uh, legislate people to the legislatures, people who are known to have been corrupt and criminal. You know these two related corruption and criminalization of politics doesn't seem to be uh, too much of an issue with the people of India. Yes, sir. Because it has been mainstreamed since uh, it hasn't gained a sort of acceptability amongst people, and uh, this is the reason why it it keeps on going. But that's a very serious issue. If you say, if as you say, it has become acceptable to the people, so how then would you deal with it? Yes, sir. Absolutely, and it's a serious issue, and uh, we need to actually deal with it. Uh, I, I would say step by step, and at each juncture. so we need different steps in administration tell me uh, some steps to deal with corruption okay. 
So I would start from administration itself. So uh, focusing on e-governance and uh, bringing in as a as a talking to survey itself, like different authorities, bringing in social audits and uh, bringing in more transparent measures. So I think that these are the steps that could be taken. An ethics code can be brought in. Uh, the, the MPs and MLAs can also be brought in in some sort of an ethical framework. Uh, and the public value service values should be... Uh, uh, Did the RTI make a difference? Uh, yes, sir, absolutely it made a difference. Uh, it actually... Gave, in what manner? Uh, is, can it be quantified? Uh, sir, quantification would be a little bit difficult, but... So how would you say that it's made a difference? So just by the sheer uh, information that people can get from the authorities and that was earlier unavailable, uh, it has actually provided a, a potent tool uh, in the hands of uh, a common person to actually go and see the records of the, of the administration. But and have there been uh, instances of uh, uh, RTI being abused, taking advantage of? Trying to get information of uh, rivals, sharing it with, with rivals. Has that happened in India? Yes, sir, the, it has happened, and the, it is one of the, uh, I would say, uh, the criticisms of RTE has been that it's, it's been used previously to actually get information and uh, uh, and use it uh, against your opponents in this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I am looking at your dad and I find that you don't seem to have an interest in outdoor sports at all. There is no mention of any outdoor sport. Uh, yes, sir. I actually like to play indoor sports more than outdoor sports. You have only mentioned about darts uh, when all the activities are indoor. Mm, yes, sir. But you like traveling, of course. Yes, yes, sir. You do that on foot or just by train, trail plane? What do you mean by traveling? Yeah. So traveling, basically, I like uh, going to mountains and uh, so, uh, so trekking and so this would be traveling or going to places. So but what has kept you away from outdoor sport? They're supposed to be very healthy, aren't they? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I do uh, indulge them, but not a lot. So sometimes Do you follow sport? Like, do you watch IPL cricket on TV? Do you follow the Olympics, for instance? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I do watch IPL. I also watch football and I followed Olympics as well. So you don't take part in them? Uh, yes, sir. Not uh, now, frequently. What can you tell me about the Olympic Games? When will they be held next? And uh, when? Where and when? So they'll be held in 2024 and in Paris. Correct. Now, India has started doing better. In, in the Olympics, we have now picked up a few gold medals in individual sports. Now, if you were part of the administration, what would you do to promote outdoor sports in India? Sir, uh, I would say the, the, my first step would be to actually build infrastructure uh, across uh, the small tire two tire three towns and uh, i see there are a lot of will <coughs> from people to play sports but uh, often there is not enough infrastructure that is available for them to play and secondly sir talent scouting is i believe which is very in a very nascent stages in india that can be broadened so we see we have a lot of uh, raw talent in again as i said in the rural areas but they don't get the opportunity to perform and uh, hone their skills so second would be uh, that and so the thirdly as I said uh, is to is to have this model of uh, selecting districts uh, and uh, and assigning them with sports so for example usually as, as we see in Haryana uh, it's doing very well in uh, in wrestling and as similarly Odisha is doing very well in hockey so maybe we can do this sort of a thing to promote uh, st state-wise sports or district-wise sports all right now, the foreign service is amongst your top three career preferences. Uh, what can you tell me about the recent visit of the UK Prime Minister? How do you think that visit was important? Uh, so, the, the visit was important because India and UK uh, 
as uh, uh, as it was said in the visit itself that we are trying to assign an FTA uh, so from that point of view it was important plus it was also important from the point of view of Russia Ukraine war so the west uh, especially the UK and US have been trying to change India's position and try to bring India into their fold and so thirdly actually um, we signed a, uh, a few MOUs and I believe uh, we take took steps in the directions of cyber security and what uh, MOU did we sign uh, sorry sir I'm not aware of the exact MOUs that we signed and was there any indication by when the FTA would be signed uh, yes sir um, uh, PM Johnson said that uh, he will try to get it signed in the by the Diwali and the PM Modi said that by the year end uh, they'll try to get it done is a free trade agreement with the UK in India's interest? Sir, so that will depend quite a lot on the conditions of the free trade agreement. I do believe that we have uh, certain uh, stronger, uh, stronger areas, for example, like services, for example, like talent, IT industries. And we do have uh, weaknesses in, inter in traditional areas, for example, like uh, agriculture wool so i think that it will depend on the terms and conditions of the free trade agreement we are also working on a free trade agreement with the united states are you aware of the problems that are being encountered in that regard uh, sir i do aware about the general problems that are there with the india us but not specifically with regards to the fta not really. what are the problems generally then which you are talking about uh, so generally, uh, the problems are the high import tariffs that India has on certain goods. And the second thing is the is the issue of services, which India tries to uh, get to the U.S. to actually. Uh, Did the U.S. withdraw certain benefits that were being accorded to us earlier? What were those? Yes, sir, the G uh, under the GSP, uh, general. And are you aware of what items got affected particularly? No, sir, I'm not aware. Not of no. Let's look at another aspect of our foreign policy. Uh, we often see that there is political instability in Pakistan sometimes. So do you think that an unstable Pakistan is in India's interest? Uh, no, sir. I think a stable Pakistan is in India's interest. Why? Uh, so there are a lot of reasons. So for example, if there is a stable Pakistan, we can start to think about establishing peace, to have harmony, to open trade. And secondly, sir, uh, with an unstable Pakistan, you never know when can the spillover effect uh, can come to India. Uh, unstable Pakistan means unstable borders. And but many is, people feel that, you know, if there is instability in Pakistan, they'll be busy in whatever their mess is and they will not trouble us. Do you think there is some truth in that? Yes, sir. I think there is some truth in that in, 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 in a very limited short term manner. But if we are looking for a long term, if we are thinking for 100, 200 years from now, I think uh, stable Pakistan would be much better. Okay, my last question. What do you think are the major problems in India's relations with Nepal? Uh, so, um, uh, so the, the biggest problem that was also highlighted last year was uh, that uh, Nepal thinks of India as uh, uh, as sort of a big brother so they, they have always this uh, insecurity with India that they, they'll try to influence their economy policies and uh, so they always try to but why don't they think of China as a big brother China is to their north and they are becoming heavily dependent on China and countries have witnessed what China's debt trap is so are they not afraid of China uh, so they are. Uh, it's just that they are using both the countries as leverage on each other to gain. A Should we allow ourselves to be used? Uh, sir, I would say it's not up to us. I mean, it's an independent country, and uh, no, no. Should we allow ourselves to? Be, should we just forget about Nepal? Let them say what they want. No, sir. Again, so we have had a very traditional relationships with Nepal, and who is the prime minister of Nepal? Uh, Sir, actually, he visited India recently. Yes, sir. Actually, I'm not able to pronounce his name. PM Do. Very easy name to pronounce. Sir. You spell his name. So D. Uh, yes, sir. D E U. Uh, 
full name? B E U. Sir, no, and who was the prime minister before Mandela? Sir, sir, P M Oli was there. Hmm? Sir, P M uh, Oli. Yes, sir. Oli. Sir, K P, Mr. K P Oli. You're not you sure. Said, you just said D E U, and then. No, that's then I asked him. Okay, tell oh, me the sorry. previous one. Okay. No, no, sorry. This yeah. one is Sheer Bahadur Deoba. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. And the one before him was K P Sharma. Oh. Yes. And the foreign service aspirant is a small thing. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Have you been following what your ministry has done in the year that has just finished, financial year? Ah, uh, yes, tax, sir. In terms of tax collection? Uh, yes, sir. How have they done? Sir, uh, tax. So, sorry, sir, I was not able to hear the last. See, tax collection. Yes, sir. At the end of the year 21 22, what was it like? Uh, sir, it, uh, it was great. So, uh, Ministry of Finance collected around 27 lakh crores of revenue. Against, against budgeted amount of? Uh, sir, I did not know the exact budgeted okay. figure, but I do know that it's more than that. Uh, it's more than, it's more than the, even the revised budget? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in terms of keeping that in mind, don't you think that the estimation of revenue in the current budget for the current year is slightly conservative? Yes, sir, up to a little bit, I would say. But again, as we see the situation, uh, there are the India's uh, growth estimates have also been reduced uh, to from 9% to close to 8%. What is, so. what is the assumption in the budget about the growth? Uh, Sir, actually, I don't know what the exact numbers that presented. Do you know how the budget forecast is done? Revenue mm -hmm. forecast for the budget? No, sir. You are not aware. Okay. Now, you are working in the in indirect taxes department. Yes, sir. Tell me, this GST is supposed to be destination based. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Which means the taxation takes place at the point where the actual consumption of goods or services is there. Yes, sir. So, are the producing states losing out? Uh, sir, it was earlier thought so that the producing states would lose out. But mm -hmm. if we look at the recent figures that have been uh, put forward, so the producing states are doing very well, and especially the producing states are the ones who are uh, who so have the most. The, what is the GST. formula for sharing? Sir, they may be collecting more taxes for different reasons. Yes, sir. Or their figures may have gone down again for different reasons. But what exactly, what is in the structure itself? Uh, sir, half of the GST uh, is shared with the states. Yes. And uh, the IGST is again appropriated by the states where the consumption is done. So, uh, so, so, sir, so these are the, uh, these okay. are the revenues. We'll, of the we'll talk. Now, about input tax credit, yes, sir. what was the recent court decision on input tax credit, particularly in, in items where the inverted duty structure is there? Mm. I'm sorry, sir, I'm not aware. Not of aware? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of what is happening in the LIC IPO? Uh, yes, sir. What, what exactly has uh, come uh, out in public domain so far? So the public, uh, so the IPO would be of 21,000 crores mm. and the and the share, each share would be around 900 rupees close to and the retail policy holders and uh, uh, the employees of the LIC would get a discount of around 50-60 rupees. That's all right. Yes, but uh, why 21,000 crores? Well, the share of this thing, valuation? Uh, sir, Are earlier... You, are you aware of how it has been done? Uh, sir, I think uh, the ministry hired an uh, insurance firm to get no, no. to... Uh, that is not... I am asking of the formula used. Um, no, sir. I don't... I am not aware of the specific formula. Have you heard of something called embedded value? Uh, yes, sir. What exactly is embedded value? Sir, sir not, I don't know the definition. Of it. All right. But don't you think, uh, you know, when this IPO comes out and you have priced your share at, it's not at 900, it's ni between 902 and 949. 
Now, supposing on listing, the price of the share goes up to 1500 or 2000 then don't you think it will be a big scandal? Uh, no, sir, because uh, the ministry no, has done its... That, no, ministry has done its own work, but if you are undervaluing your share so much, then who loses out? Sir, it's the, it's the taxpayer's money. Government loses out? Yes, sir. So, will that not become a big scandal? Uh, Sir, I don't, again, I don't think so because uh, this sort of enthusiasm is always there and uh, the stock then eventually actually goes to its uh, current or inherent value after a few days. We saw this sort of trend with the, with the private companies as no, well. No, it's not like that. Zomato shares went up. Yes, sir. Nika shares went up. Yes, sir. But Paytm shares went down. Yes, sir. Sir, but... Again, with Zomato shares as well, they went up initially, but now they have actually uh, come down to their... So, fair enough. The valuation was more or less correct. But immediately on listing, yes, sir. if the shares go up dram dramatically, then it means you have undervalued your shares. No, sir. Not <clears throat> uh, not rightly, because uh, the, the increase in shares may be inorganic as well, because of the public enthusiasm, because no. of the... Uh, it's not like that. Not on the day of listing. And we will discuss this in your feedback, but let me ask you some other question. You are also a computer engineer? Yes, sir. What is Web 3.0? Uh, sir, Web 3.0 is a new model of web that uh, that is proposed by uh, Mr. Tim Lee, who, who was the creator of the World Wide Web, uh, which the model actually uh, brings about decentralization. It actually inter uh, engages technologies of ML and AI to serve uh, information to the public uh, right now in web 2.0 we don't use these technologies as much in web 3.0 uh, we will actually incorporate these technologies and uh, will give the user the right information uh, from from the starting point itself but we will use distributed ledger yes actually sir the the web 3.0 will be built as i said will be decentralized and it will be built on the blockchain technology using the decentralization is blockchain and distributed ledger same thing so blockchain you yes sir, more or less blockchain uses a distributed ledger to uh, actually to function so it's uh, the the distributed ledger is the block backbone of the blockchain no but i i would say distributed ledger well, subset of distributed ledger is blockchain? Uh, yes, sir, you can say that. Okay. My last question to you. You have studied in Delhi. What are your views on unification of the municipal corporations? Uh, sir, I, sir, I think it's a, uh, it's a good step. Uh, it will bring about uniformity and uh, and the revenues, the revenues will be consolidated, and uh, and the regional sort of issues can also be handled uh, through this. Uh, what was the problem in the trifurcated corporation? So the problem was that uh, there was uh, the, the these trifurcated uh, corporations were functioning in silos, and so there was not a lot of cooperation between them, and uh, the. the <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Dibyansh. Our meeting with you is over. So, kindly wait outside for a few minutes. We'll call you for a feedback. Thank, thank you, sir. Right.